the Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Millions of women all over America serve Parquet because it tastes so good. Why, Parquet tastes like it should cost twice as much. To market, to market, to get some Parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You'll like it, you'll love it like millions who say. Their favorite margarine is... P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Well, there's an interesting social item in the Summerfield Indicator this morning. At a brilliant party last night, Miss Adeline Devereaux Fairchild, a former Savannah debutante, announced her engagement to Mr. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, Summerfield's most eligible bachelor. There was only one jarring note. When a taxi pulled up and Gildersleeve saw his old light of love daintily step out. It's Leela. Yes, Leela Ransom is back in town. But our hero took it as only a great man can. He fainted twice and had to be carried home. <laughs> it's the next morning now, and the great Gildersleeve trudges downstairs to breakfast. Oh, can't wait to get some black coffee. Morning, Miss Gildersleeve. Oh, good morning, Bertie. Oh, I see you have the baby up already. Yes, sir. Hello, little girl. <laughs> She's had breakfast, and I'm taking her upstairs for a nap. Oh, well, I hope you sleep better than I did last night, little baby. Uh, do you know what you got me into? Do you know that I am now an engaged man just because I want to adopt you? It's not funny. <laughs> From over here, it sounded like you had a big party, Mr. Gilsley. Oh, yes, we did. I sure was surprised to hear that Miss Ransom came back. I was a little surprised myself. Well, anyway, Mr. Gillsleeve, you're all set to take the fatal step. That's the important thing. Uh, I think I'll go have some breakfast. <laughs> yes, sir, it's on the table. Eat hearty, Mr. Gillsleeve. You can't live off love. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, black coffee will taste good this morning. Good morning, Uncle Mark. Uh, good morning, Marjorie. Hi, Al. We're waiting for you. Yes, yeah, so I see, Leroy. Will you pour me some coffee, Marjorie, please? Oh, sure, Unky. What did she have to say? Who? You know who I mean, Mrs. Ransom. Well, I really didn't have a chance to talk to Leela last night. Why did Mrs. Ransom come back to town, Unk? Well, that's her house that Adeline lives in, you know. She has to check things. Winter's coming on. Oh, sure. I bet she came all the way from Savannah just to see if Miss Fairchild had put on the storm windows. Marjorie... Let's not try to figure these things out. All right. I think Mrs. Ransom did the most dramatic thing, Uncle. Appearing just at the moment your engagement was announced. Very dramatic. What did she do, Uncle? Run up the sidewalk yelling, stop the music? <laughs> no, Roy. It must be embarrassing. The girl you're engaged to and your old sweetheart living in the same house. It's not embarrassing at all. If Mrs. Ransom corners you, Uncle Mort, how are you going to explain it to her? Now, Marjorie, I'm under no obligation to Mrs. Ransom. None whatsoever. It was all over between us when she left town. Of course. However, I should happen to see her. And if she's curious about what happened, I'll just tell her what happened. <laughs> Poor Uncle. You're still fond of her, aren't you? Marjorie, you forget that I'm engaged to Miss Fairchild. I can't be fond of another woman. <laughs> Leroy eats a prune. <laughs> for Leela to understand at that. I don't know why I should worry about what she thinks. She walked out on me. Still, I'd feel better about it if I had a talk with her. I'll give her a jingle right now. Now, 
May as well wait till Bessie comes to work. And if Adeline answers, Bessie can hang up. Ah, secretaries are great comfort. Where is that Bessie? She's 20 minutes late. Ah, ah, ah. Leela looked lovely last night. Coming up the walk, loaded with furs. Watch it, Gildersleeve. You have to remember Adeline. Oh, good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. Bessie, you're late to work again. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve. I was reading about your engagement party on the bus. Oh? And it was so interesting, I rode at the end of the line. What a secretary. And Mr. Gildersleeve, right next to that is a social item that Mrs. Leela Ransom is back in town. Isn't that a strange coincidence? Very strange. You don't suppose she came back to throw a monkey wrench in your engagement, do you, Mr. Gildersleeve? Monkey wrench? Figure of speech, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, uh, I know, Bessie. Hang up your coat and get ready to make a phone call for me. Yes, sir. Figure of speech. Good morning, Bessie. Good morning, Judge Hooker. Uh, Hooker. Is the water commissioner able to be up and around this morning? Uh, well, there he is. And he's lovely. He's engaged. <laughs> All right, you old goat, what's on your mind? I'm busy. I won't take a minute, Gilda. I merely thought you'd be interested to know that I had a little talk with Leela this morning. Leela? You did? Property matters, of course. Oh? Dead. What a woman. More exciting than ever. The grace of Diana. The charm of Helen of Troy. The allure of Cleopatra. Yeah, that's Leela, all right. <laughs> How is she, Judge? Well, I can tell you more after lunch, Gildy. We're dining together this noon at the Summerfield Grill. Oh, could it be, my fat friend, that you'd like to be sitting in my place? Certainly not. Why should I? That's <laughs> too bad. Leela has invited you to join us. She has? Well, no. <laughs> I shouldn't do it. I think I'll just call her, Judge. Calling Leela is never the same as seeing Leela. But, but, Judge, what if some old gossip sees me? Leela thought of that. She had me reserve that cozy little private dining room, the palm room. The palm room? And I'll be there to chaperone. <laughs> well, we'll see you there at one o'clock, Gilda. Fine. I do have some things to say to her. I bet she has a few things to say to you, too. <laughs> oh, I won't go. <laughs> Well, I'm here. Where are they? Table for one, sir. Uh, I'm waiting for a woman, miss. I mean, a man and a woman. <laughs> We've reserved that little palm room. Guess I'm a little early. I'll wait for him back there. Very well, sir. <laughs> uh, probably shouldn't be having lunch with Leela, but what the heck. Hooker will be with us. At least I should see her while she's here, just for old time's sake. It is private. A little dark in here. Yoo-hoo, Frostmorton! Oh! <laughs> Leela! I didn't see you behind that potted palm. Mm -hmm. I heard you come and show off all that play peekaboo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm awfully glad you could come, Frostmorton. Uh, so am I, Leela. I didn't know if I should, though, but the judge said... I know. And by the way, where is the judge? Oh, I'm afraid the judge will be unavoidably detained. He will? Uh, how do you know? Well, you know little old rattle-headed me. I got my property matters so mixed up this morning, the poor man had to take his lunch hour to get them straightened out. <laughs> he did? Mm, so I guess you and I will just have to lunch alone. <laughs> <laughs> Leela, you're a little devil. You think so, Throckmorton? <laughs> uh, same old Leela. Bye, George. It's good to see you. Say, you're doing your hair differently, aren't you? Well, I was wondering when you were going to say something, and you haven't even looked at my new dress. Well, mm, I didn't... <laughs> Uh, 
I, uh, I didn't think I should, being an engaged man. <laughs> oh, silly. When a woman gets all gushed up, she wants to be appreciated. Even if it is only to meet an old ex-sweetheart. Uh, yes. I want to talk to you about that, Leela. Um, shall we uh, sit down? Mm, let's. I didn't get a chance to explain last night. Are you angry, Leela? Oh, good gracious. Why should I be angry? When a girl's best boyfriend becomes engaged to a girl's cousin, who can understand better than that girl? <laughs> oh, Leela, you're true blue. I'm glad to see you taking it like this. Of course, I knew you would. You're such a sincere, level-headed girl. Flatterer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jack Martin, I'm afraid I forgot. Congratulations. I wish you every happiness. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and I hope you can find it with Adeline. <laughs> <laughs> of course, now that you're engaged to be married, I bet you'll never think of little old Leela again. Oh, oh, yes, I will. I'm afraid I'll think of you, too, sometimes. Mm -hmm. Throckmorton. Yes, Leela? You're holding my hand. I am? Oh, I'm still shaking it from the congratulations. <laughs> we can't carry on like we used to. No, I guess not. Oh, remember that beautiful summer day? We packed a lunch and went boating up at Grass Lake. The two of us. I was thinking about that just last night. Mm. The boat got stuck on a sandbar, and big old strong you carried me ashore in your arms because you didn't want me to get my bathing suit wet. <laughs> Throckmorton? Huh? You're holding my hand again. Oh, uh, sorry, Leela. I thought I was leading you back to camp. You weren't leading. You were squeezing. Uh, sorry. <laughs> you naughty boy. <laughs> oh, remember those snug winter evenings in my parlor when we'd sit on the rug in front of the fire and popcorn? And the nights we just sat there. Yeah, I like them best. <laughs> Trout Martin, have you done that in my parlor with my cousin Adeline? No. Well, those were wonderful days. Wonderful? Of course, we did have our ins and outs. Like the time that hot-blooded Spanish dancer came to town. <laughs> and then you got sweet on Eve Goodwin. My, you were the busy boy. Well, you were engaged to that Dr. Julian Henry, and you nearly married Lightfoot Dupree. You weren't exactly idle, Leela. <laughs> Just listen to you. But every spring when my lilac bush bloomed, we fell in love all over again, Shrapnel. <laughs> Head over heels. Head over heels. You'd sniff those lilacs a while, and then you'd sing to me so beautifully. Yeah. Throckmorton, will you do me a teensy favor? Well, anything you say. Will you sing to me now? Sing? But Leela, we're in a restaurant. Now, we're in a private dining room. Oh. Come along now. I'll play this little old rotary club piano. No, Leela. Come on, sit right here on the bench with me. Well, I... Sing to me softly. I don't feel like singing. Please. For Leela, our son. Mm. Well, I never could refuse Leela anything. Oh, that's a dear. Now she ain't pretty like you used to. Mm. Speak to me of love and say what I'm longing to hear. <laughs> Repeat them again, I implore you. <laughs> Speak to me of love and whisper these words to me, dear. I adore. up. Oh, you poor darling. 
tell Leela all about it. That's what I want to do, Leela. Explain the whole thing to you. You know, I found the baby in the back seat of my car. Yes, Rockmore. You just can't help loving a baby, Leela. But the law says I can't adopt her until I get married. And Adeline was near. I bet she was. And, and the next thing I knew, I was engaged. Mercy, Adeline should be ashamed of herself. Why, well, that's like shooting a fish in a barrel. Huh? <laughs> of you to want to make a home for the baby, Throckmorton, but you shouldn't let just anybody talk you into getting engaged. Well, if you'd been here, Leela, this probably wouldn't have happened. Throckmorton, do you know what you're saying? What'd I say? That if I'd been here, you'd be engaged to me now. Well, if you'd said yes. Well, I'm here and I say yes. Huh? <laughs> now all you have to do is explain everything to Adeline. Explain what? That I'm engaged to two women. It's the last week you can win a big, beautiful Ford sedan. Yes, if you want to share in $50,000 in prizes, enter Parquet's final contest now. Four high-powered 1949 four-door Ford sedans are going to be awarded this week. And the grand prize winner gets $1,000 cash besides his Ford. So hurry up and enter. This final week, Parquet will also award 40 General Electric Table Radios, 20 Corey Coffee Makers, 20 Toastmaster Automatic Pop-Up Toasters, 60 new $10 bills. Now, to go after your share of prizes, just send us a suggested name for the Gildersleeve Baby Girl. Write it on a contest entry blank. They're available at your food dealers with complete rules. Or use a plain piece of paper. Send entry, your name and address, and one red flap from the end of a package of Parquet Margarine to Parquet Margarine, Box 736, Chicago 77, Illinois. Be sure to enclose your Parquet dealer's name and address. Take advantage of this last opportunity to win the high-powered, streamlined 1949 four-door Ford sedan. Mail it now to Parquet Margarine, Box 736, Chicago 77, Illinois. You still have a wonderful opportunity to win a new Ford, but only if your entry is postmarked by Saturday midnight. Well, let's rejoin the man with the ambidextrous heart. Last night, the great Gildersleeve had an engagement dinner with Miss Adeline Fairchild. And this noon, as it turned out, he had an engagement luncheon with Mrs. Leela Ransom. Now he's returning to the office trying to figure out what happened. I have a faint suspicion that Leela tricked me into this. Of course, she has always been fond of me. What will Adeline say? Ye gods, what will the jury say? Good afternoon, Miss Kingsley. Uh, hello, Bessie. Did you and Mrs. Ransom have a nice lunch? Lunch? I don't remember eating. Oh, ho! Bessie, watch it. You were gone so long, I wondered what had happened. Well, a lot has happened. Ugh. Water department. Oh, one moment, please. It's for you, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm not talking to anybody. Well, I think you'll want to talk at this party. It sounds like your lady love. Which one? I mean, who? <laughs> I'll give you a teeny-weeny hint. She has a southern accent. Uh, Bessie, is it Mrs. Ransom or Miss Fairchild? Oh, both of them do have southern accents, don't they? Yes, Bessie. Which one is it? Well, it can't be Miss Fairchild. Why? Because she's on her way down here. Oh! Aren't you going to take this phone call? Tell her I'm not in. I'm not... Hello, Peavy. Well, hello, Mr. Gillespie. <laughs> what can I do for you this afternoon? Peavy, fix me a double Coke. Very well. And Peavy, bring it to me in the back room. In the back room? Mr. Yeah, and Peavy, don't tell anyone I'm back there. Very well. Reminds me of Prohibition Day. <laughs> there you are. Thanks. Mm. 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 Rob a bank, Mr. Gildersleeve? It's much worse than that, Peavy. Keep a sharp lookout and warn me if any women I know come in. <laughs> Very well. I'm on the lookout anyway. I'm expecting Mrs. Peavy to drop in this afternoon. She came downtown to have her feet fixed. Yeah. Oh. Nice engagement party last night, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hope nothing's gone wrong. Well, everything's gone wrong, Peavy. 
I was trying to explain to Leela how I got engaged to Adeline. I got engaged to Leela again. <laughs> Mrs. Ransom? My, my. Two women. Isn't that awful, Peavy? Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Peavy, I don't know what to do. Well, if I were you, I'd just rest on my laurels. Yes. Got engaged to two women. You've had a busy 24 hours. Now, Peavy, let's not be facetious. This whole thing's enough to make me want to go throw myself right in a reservoir. Oh, now, Mr. Gildersleeve, there's always the bright side. There are people who would consider you in a very favorable predicament. How can you say that, Peavy? Well, at least you have a choice. You... That's more than I can say. <laughs> I was only engaged to one woman. Expect her along in a minute now. She's downtown having her feet fixed. Yes, I know, Peavy. No, sir, I didn't have a choice. Yes, yeah. sir. Mr. Gildersleeve, you said to keep a sharp lookout for a woman. Oh, I'm ducking out the back way, Peavy. Goodbye, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, did you get your feet fixed, honey? Floyd, while you're shaving me, do you mind standing between me and the window? But, Commissioner, that cuts off the light. I might nick you. Rather than have Adeline see me right now, I'll take that chance. <laughs> Commissioner, I gotta hand it to you. You have more fun than anybody. Floyd, this isn't my idea of fun. You ought to be proud of yourself, Commissioner. You ought to be the happiest man in Summerfield, engaged to two southern chicks. You're really living. Please, Floyd, I never should have told you. And both of them cousins. Down south, is that what they call kissing cousins? <laughs> Floyd, I'm in no joking mood. I'll bet Adeline thinks I'm nothing more than a playboy. So what? You'd rather marry the widow Ransom, wouldn't you? Well, now, Floyd... You know what, Commish? I don't think you want to marry either one of them dames. Floyd, I don't go around proposing to women with the idea of backing out. Okay. I just had an idea how you could get out of it. Of course, you're not interested. Absolutely not. What is it? <laughs> Well, the dames has already got the impression you're a little fickle. Why don't you go all the way? All the way? Yeah. What do you mean? Really prove to them you ain't to be trusted. Go to them with a big confession, Commission, that you're engaged to six other women. Lloyd, that's ridiculous. I don't even know six other so women. So what? Make them up. Tell them you got a manicurist, two waitresses, a traveling saleswoman, and a lady car hop from California. Oh. <laughs> I've never been to California. Well, that makes a good story, Commission. And believe me, the dames will run from you like it was poison. Floyd, I couldn't stoop to that. Okay. But for a guy over his head as deep as you are, it's either stoop or be a stoop. <laughs> I'd hustle on over there and burn my bridges. <laughs> Finish me up, Floyd. Hey, I got another great idea. Huh? I just seen that William Powell picture. Tell him you're also engaged to a mermaid out at your reservoir. Floyd. <laughs> They'd never believe that. <laughs> has a tendency to carry things too far. But he did help me see myself as I really am. I wouldn't make a good husband. I'm too fickle. Maybe Floyd's right. As much as it hurts, I'll just have to tell him what a heel I am. And neither of them will want me. <laughs> oh, uh, hello, Adeline. May I come in? <laughs> Are you sure you want to come in? Well, I'm, I'd like to. You'll find Cousin Leela in the parlor. You know the way. Uh, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> right, right along the hall here. <laughs> you come along, too, though, Adeline. This concerns you. It concerns all of us. I have a big confession to make. Uh, hello, Leela. Hello, Throckmorton. <laughs> uh, nice to see you back in town. I mean... Cousin uh, Leela's told me all about it, Throckmorton. She has? She certainly has. All about lunch and what happened. Well, uh, you know how luncheons are. One thing leads to another. <laughs> Leela. <laughs> I just had to tell my sweet little old cousin. I wouldn't do anything behind Adeline's back. You know that. Oh, no. <laughs> me neither. I admit that I did lose my head when you swept me off my feet in that private dining room. You sounded so sincere. No, Leela. Don't you think he sounds sincere when he proposes Adeline? 
I certainly do. <laughs> Always singing love songs. Uh, what did he sing when he proposed to you, cousin? Uh, now, wait a minute, Leela. Well, he didn't sing that night. In fact, he hardly talked. Uh, Adeline, Leela, how can you do this to me? I'm sorry, but this is a case where blood cousins are thicker than water. Water commissioner. But it grieves me to say, Throckmorton, that the only reason I came up here was to protect my dear little unprotected cousin. Well, I may as well admit it then. That's what I came over here to tell you, that I'm not to be trusted. I'm fickle. You've certainly proven that. You bet I have. I'm not worthy of either one of you. I'm just a heartbreaker. Oh, I don't think you've broken so many hearts, Throckmorton. <laughs> you just don't know, Leela. How do you know that you're the only two women I'm engaged to? What? Why, I can think of at least six other women. A manicurist, two waitresses, a traveling saleswoman. That's far. Why, I haven't even mentioned the car lady car hop from California. Oh, a lady car hop? Really, Carthorne? So, girls, save yourselves. Break the engagements. Both of them. I'm just a gigolo. I don't care. We're staying engaged. We are? But Adeline, why? You need me to protect you from all those women. The husband. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Strong boy. Yes, Leela? I used to think you were pretty dull, but you've uncovered a shot I didn't know you had. Oh, <laughs> I have? You he-man, you. Oh, I just love bold, dashing Yankees. I'm going to stay engaged to you, too. But Leela... <laughs> Leela Ransom, you've got your nerve. Now, honey, I was engaged to him long before you ever saw him. I don't care. You just trot on back to Savannah. I will not. This is my house. You take your old house. I'll soon be moving over to Throckmorton. Oh! <laughs> about fire. Oh, I'm still engaged to two women. <laughs> and now, the names of the entrants who have won 1948 four-door Ford sedans in the third week of Parquet's big series of $50,000 contests. Mrs. Ben Rasmussen of Waukesha, Wisconsin. Mrs. Clara Bryant of P.O. Box 534, Wetumpka, Oklahoma. Dorothy L. Magri of Cleveland, Ohio. Miss Irene Thayer of Cambridge, Massachusetts. Congratulations to all of you. 140 winners of other prizes will be notified by mail. Remember, please, the fifth week's contest is the final one. Yes. And it closes for good this Saturday. It's now or never if you want a 1949 four-door Ford sedan. Step up your opportunities to win by sending several entries. Above all, send them now. This is the last time we can announce this contest. Mr. Gildersleeve, that barber is on the phone. Uh, Floyd Munson? He seems upset about something. Uh, thanks, Bessie. Hello, Floyd? Commissioner Gildersleeve, what kind of a water department are you running? I get a guy all soaked up with a shampoo, and then I turn on the water, and nothing happens. How come? That was just a little reminder, Mr. Munson. Look, look, I paid my water bill. That's got nothing to do with it. Hereafter, keep your bum advice about women to yourself. What? Good night, folks. <laughs> Folks, here's an announcement Kraft hasn't been able to make until right now, since way back in 1941. Now, at long last, Kraft has plenty of aged, natural American cheese for you. The mellow golden wheels dealers cut in wedges. Since before the war, the need for cheese has been so great that it was difficult to set aside enough for curing. Just this past year, Kraft could send plenty of fine cheddars to the curing rooms, guarded for months and months. Now this pre-war treat is back. Ask your dealer for a wedge of the mellow, grand-eating natural cheese aged so carefully for you by the master cheesemakers of Kraft. This is NBC, the...